Hello everyone and welcome to Tony Fox Tarot. Thanks for tuning in to watch my channel today. It's great to have you with me. Today's pick a card reading question is when will I find love? So that's a big question and we've got lots to get through to find out what that really means. We're going to have a look at how you're thinking, feeling and experiencing the idea of finding love and most importantly we're going to look at a timeline as to when that's going to manifest. So before we get started if you would like to go down below and hit subscribe you can tap on the bell icon while you're down there. That will give you notifications for any future readings that I post. Uh, please feel free to like and share this video. And if you have any comments or feedback, you can leave that down below. Um, if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to my website, www.tonyfoxtarot.com. That will give you plenty of information on who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how it is that you can access my service. And just on a final note, I'm releasing videos on YouTube each and every week, so feel free to browse those that I've already posted. Now, um, we have four different cards before us on the screen, each represented by a different colored dice. Card number one with the blue dice, card number two with the orange dice, card number three with the purple dice, and card number four with the green dice. So taking in a nice deep breath and thinking about the question, when will I find love? And releasing the breath, and focusing on the cards before you on the screen, which of these has the strongest resonance for you? Is it card number one with the blue dice? Card number two with the orange dice? Card number three with the purple dice? Or is it card number four with the green dice? Down below, four different timestamps representing each of the different cards. If you would like to go to the timestamp that represents your card, I'll be with you in a moment. Hi guys, this is card number one, and if you chose the blue dice, uh, this is the reading for you. So let us get the cards out on the table and have a look and see what's going on. So we have Wheel of Fortune. Nine of Swords. The Hermit. Seven of Pentacles. Death. Four of Wands, Temperance, Queen of Pentacles, No, Wait, Postpone, Pause, Say No, Free Yourself, It's Time to Take Back Control of Your Life, and Manifest. Okay, just get those little cards straightened out there so they're all nice and tidy and where they need to be. <laughs> so it doesn't give me a heart attack. <laughs> I like to have them ordered to some degree. So I'm drawn straight over here to Wheel of Fortune and the Nine of Swords. And I feel that... I feel like you've been through a really difficult time and... Um, there's a lot of worry about what's going on for the future in relation to this question of when will I find love. I feel like you're very, um, it's, it's like you're anticipating the worst case scenario, you know, that you feel out, and also that you feel out of control, that somehow things aren't going to manifest in the way that you'd like them to manifest. Um, I feel like there's been some difficult experiences that you have been holding on to and that you've been able, unable to let go of. Um, and I think that's also been accumulative over many years. And I get a sense that you're not actually clear about what you want in terms of a relationship for the future either. Um, it's interesting because if we come down here to no, wait, wait, postpone, pause and say no. Um, this is a card that says, if you were to say yes about jumping into a relationship right now, it wouldn't do very much. It, it would just drain your, drain your energy in terms of an experience. Um, things aren't aligned at this point in time for you to, to, to sort of jump into to that particular experience. You know, you're not set in terms of 
your holistic kind of, um, I guess, preparation to be able to meet the relationship that you really deserve or you really want at this point in time. And so therefore, the, the thing that you need to be doing is to be to be waiting out um, and, and waiting for 100 percent alignment for love, really. And timing for this is, is really everything. So just because a relationship's not happening right now, it doesn't mean to say that you're not heading in the right direction. You know, there is a process that is going on that may not seem quite so obvious to you, um, but which is happening. So don't be frustrated. Um, you need you need this time really for, for clarity and, 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 and consideration. You know, we all go through these waiting periods for, for many different things. Um, I think also... <sighs> A, a, a yes at the right time, you know, it puts you in 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 good in good sort of um, step to make leaps and bounds to actually get what you want at the right time, as opposed to sort of you know jumping in now in a frustrated and, un, and also unclear way that takes you through a, a, a very different process process that would actually drain you from the energy and possibly you know really connect you into somebody who's not really on the same wavelength wavelength that you're at at a much deeper level so so don't sort of force something that seems a not clear um or, or b because it feels like it's the only option at this time and ma maybe the idea of a relationship for you is 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 something that makes sense because you, you you feel uncertain about where everything is going. You feel un, you know that you're not in control of everything that's happening in terms of that particular um, phase that you're wishing to, to to sort of move into. So so it's really time to time to take a breath and to regenerate and to ponder what it is that you really want. And and you know if it's not clear that's okay it's it's perfectly okay i think we come down here to manifest this is another card that really sort of builds on what we've just discussed with no manifest is is, is you know it's, it's a card that really indicates fear and doubt which prevents a relationship manifesting and the fear is very real for you it's 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 at the forefront you know this 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 topic you know finding love it's, it's generates an enormous benefit we're going to get to to where you know, when the relationship happens, but I need to go through this process for you to understand what you need to do to get clear about what you want to manifest. And um, <clears throat> I really feel that, you know, matters of the heart for you at the moment are, are, are restricting and confining. There's a lot of fear in the heart area that's closing you down. And there's a lot of negativity and doubt around what you think may happen. And I think this has a lot to do with, with, with your self-worth and, and that feeling of whether you'll ever find love, okay? And these thoughts need to be controlled in a way so you don't manifest the negative outcomes. You know, you don't want to be per perpetuating these negative cycles. You need to be breaking them and tapping into what it is that's really motivating this fear about love. It could be because you feel unlovable. It might be other things as well. It might be about giving up your freedom. Um, or, or maybe it's about the fact that you fear that you won't have your needs met. In any case, you need to, to face your fears. Because if you don't have that fear, then all you've got to bring to a relationship is unconditional love. If you're bringing a whole load of baggage, in inverted commas, okay, um, you're going to fuel that connection with this person in a way that compensates around your, your uh, deeper and destabilizing and destructive... Um, fears so you can have the relationship that you desire but you have to be clear of fear first so release and open up your heart but clear the fear free yourself it's time to take back control of your life this is fundamentally what we're going through you're going through a difficult time this is an ending linked to a new beginning death is about transition it's a difficult transition for you there's no doubt about it and we come down here to temperance and the queen of pentacles who are you as a person you are going through a healing process but you're also somebody who is very motivated by a soul connection with somebody you want to, you want this to be the real deal and also you're very practical i think you're in a you know you're, you're entering in, into a space where you're really looking to build things up on a material level you wanted to get focused and be comfortable with the nicer things in life the queen of pentacles is a card of 
is a kind of luxury in some ways. It doesn't have to be sort of, you know, too kind of over the top. But, you know, it's about having some padding in your life. It's about having nice things around you, about achieving material and financial goals that give you the security that allows you to be comfortable and to enjoy your nurturing space so that you can hand things on, not only to your children, but your children's children. And I think you're really wanting to connect in with somebody who really shares that particular focus. That's really important to you. And you want this connection to be a healing connection, but you also want this connection to be quite magnetic. You want it to be emotionally connected, spiritually connected. And I, and, and, and I think, you know, essentially you, you're, you're a very giving person. You really want to give to the partner that you're actually going to be with. Give perhaps to the children that you want to have in a way that um, leaves a legacy, okay? Leaves a mark on, on, on this earth that says, I was here and I did not only the best that I could do, but I actually made something of myself and passed that down to, 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 through generations. You want to be remembered, Okay, and I don't say it's about ego, it's actually about manifestation. Come back over here to master, it's about manifestation. Manifesting the things that you want in a connected way. And if we come up to here with the Hermit and the Seven of Pentacles, once again, the Hermit is a card of reflection, it's looking to the past, it's a card of wisdom, it's, 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 it's about insight and, and, and process from within to understand what's going on. I also get again this, this idea about money is very important. Perhaps you've also been working very hard towards, towards certain financial goals, building and establishing uh, money and security and really thinking about what the next step is. Maybe you've gotten to a point or reached a, a certain point in your life where you're, where, where you're ready to move on, but you're still reflecting on what else it is that needs to be added into your, your world um, in a way that gives you security, because obviously this is very important, but it's also looking back, you know, the, 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 the Hermit and also the Seven of Pentacles, they're, they're, they're reflecting, they're reflecting on the past, and the past is back here to the Wheel of Fortune and the Nine of Swords, and the, the Wheel of Fortune is about taking a risk, you know, taking a risk in love, that brings up a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, yeah, a lot of stress, you know, a lot of fear. And the fear is a, a fear of the unknown, but it's based on your past experiences, perhaps in relationships, because the, the, the swords are about conflict. And so therefore taking a risk to move forward and, you know, letting go, it's, it's, it just doesn't seem to be happening for you right now because you're bound by these past experiences and these, these anxieties, these fears. And... I feel that you're actually entering, you're in a, you're, the temperance is a healing card. You're in a healing phase. You're, 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 you're consolidating. You're getting down to the, to the core of what it is that you need for yourself and what you need from a relationship. And I think that you're clarifying that, you know, and it's a difficult process, you know, but it's one where until you actually are truthful with yourself, you are unable to move forward to actually achieve what it is that you really want. But once you let go of that fear by identifying what that fear really is, then it's out, on the op out in the open and you can begin to work on that and let it go and be clear about what it is that you want. And I do see beyond that, the four of, Pentac oh, sorry, the four of wands, manifestation, the ones all, all about manifestation. Manifestation in terms of working hard towards, work towards certain goals. But it's also, this is about a domestic arrangement with people working towards um, finding uh, um, stability and security in terms of a home and being with somebody who is working with you. I feel that within the next four months, you're actually entering into a very new phase of, 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 of your world in terms of the idea of finding love and you will be ready at that point transitioning into that area of your world where you're very clear about what you want in terms of a relationship and within this four year period so it's a four year period I'm not saying it's going to take you four years to find somebody but within the four year period you will have met somebody and established a very strong footing and I feel like you'll actually be living with this person by then and you'll both have manifested um together a really solid basis in terms of establishing a life together and I feel like there's a home there as well 
um, and you have these these fruits. You know, the garland. You know, in the four of wands is very much about the fruits of your labor, and the both of you will have achieved an enormous amount together that really gives you the reward of this relationship. I feel that you will have found love by this point. So I'm talking. I'm talking about a lot of different things here that preload this thrust of finding love in a way where you need to navigate very honestly with yourself about what you want from a relationship, but also about what you need to let go of in order to find it. Listen, I hope this reading has made some sense to you. And if it has, please leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Um, so like and share this video where you can and hit subscribe down below. Hit the bell icon while you're there. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. And if you are interested in my services as a psychic tarot reader, um, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. Thank you very much. Hi guys, this is card number two. And if you chose the orange dice, then this is the reading for you. So let me get the cards out on the table and we can see what we have to work with. So we have the Empress, the Six of Swords, the Star, King of Wands, the Magician, Knight of Cups, the Sun, King of Cups, Soul Family. Let go of control issues. And listen. I can see straight away here with the Knight of Cups and the Magician. I'm pointing to these, I'm just trying to straighten these up. <laughs> um, I can see you're a really outgoing person. I don't think you have any problems with meeting anybody. I think a very attractive person too. I, I, your energy is quite um, quite charged. There's something a little bit charismatic about you. I think there's a confidence at a social level. Um, I think you interact with people with great ease, um, very likable. And there's something quite dynamic about you. I think people like to be around you, very, very attractive all around. Um, good energy, very, very, very loving energy, very good with people. And it comes comes to, to, to the same sort of, I, I guess, the same sort of resonance, really. It comes down here with the sun and the king of cups. I think, I think, you know, at an emotional level, you're an incredibly responsible person. Very considerate of other people in a way where you really look out for them. Um, I think you try to always do your best when it comes to people. And doing your best is, a, is, is an important theme in, in this particular spread. If I come up here to the Star and King of Wands, the King of Wands is a card of high output, high output. And it's, he's a very, very responsible character. Of course, he's on, on the highest end of the order in terms of the, the suit of the Wands. And the King is really all about responsibility and professionalism and making sure that the job is done. The star is a card of focus. It's about your hopes, your wishes, and your dreams. It's about pinning something on a star, wishing on a star. And I think when it comes to work, you're highly focused, very responsible, and that you have a high yielding output, okay? Um, but when it comes to people, okay, I think this is a bit of a, a bit of a problem because there's a tendency to take on the responsibility for other people. So when it comes to relationships, if somebody isn't pulling their weight, rather than reconcile that and address it in a way where the other person has to take responsibility for themselves, there's this tendency to jump in and basically take up the slack. I think you like to manage things. I think you like to be in control and you're very driven to make things a success. And I think that also brushes off into your relationships as well. No, it doesn't have to be just also intimate relationship. It can probably can be any relationship for somebody like you. Um, and I think that this has been a problem. In the past, if I look over here to the Empress and the Six of Swords, the Empress is a card of productivity. And 
The Six of Swords is about helping other people. And I think when things aren't productive, it confirms what I've already suggested. There's this tendency to try and help people through the situation and essentially um, take up the slack and take on the responsibility to get things to the other side. I can see here also that the Empress is a card of uh, maternal instincts, of children and motherhood. Um, it's not just about productivity. So it could also be that the neediness of other relationships have gotten in the way, perhaps, of you wanting to achieve this uh, idea of having children. Um, or it could be that you're just expected to be the mother in the relationship. I mean, that'd be, that would be the worst thing, I think, for anybody, really. Nobody wants to sort of be a mother or a father in a relationship. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're looking to have a soul connection, you know, you want them to be standing on the same level as you. You don't want to be standing side by side, not in a, in a way where you're kind of becoming the caretaker. And I think that's a tendency that you actually have. You have to be very careful here because otherwise you step into that role of, you know, doing what needs to be done for other people. And, and, and I, I think most importantly, I think that your needs in the past haven't been addressed. So previous relationships haven't stepped up to actually give you what it is that you need. I don't say that's all their fault or your fault. I think part, uh, sorry, their fault. I think partly that is also your fault of actually perhaps setting that standard. Um, coming back down here to the sun and the, and the king of cups, my sense is that you, you re uh, the, the idea of a relationship is a really big focus for you. And I think you're really wanting to, to, to be with somebody at a soul heartfelt level. The sun is a card once again of children. This idea of children comes up very strongly for you. Perhaps wanting to be with somebody who can actually be uh, not only a soul partner, but, you know, the, the, the father of your children. Um, letting go of control issues is really important. You know, you, you need to allow things to unfold in a natural way. Otherwise, once again, you know, there's this, this tendency to compensate. And I think the, what's happening here is, is that because of this control um, focus, there's this, there's, you're starting to, or, well, you have always orbited into these relationships um, that need uh, somebody like you. I think, I think maybe you've even, even enjoyed that, enjoyed looking out for the other person. But, but you see, that's not going to get you to where you want to be in terms of having uh, love. <laughs> you know, love, love is about um, being unconditional. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's about being there for each other. But that's that's kind of like in, in, in a balanced way. And this isn't balanced. You know, this is this is really very much about compensating. And my, 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 my sense is, is that you need to not only address that, but you also need to call in your soul family, call in your tribe, calling in um, the people that have a strong resonance to who it is that you are on a much more spiritual level. So it's it's really time to um, to, to to sort of. Bring in your 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 chosen family in terms of a relationship, um, and I feel that they that they, they, they are around you at this time. That the person that you're looking to have a relationship is looking for you, and if it, if they aren't already close by, then they're certainly within your field of orbit. And I feel that this is something that's very close to you at this time, and I, it's important to really. Shine brightly and be who it is that you really are. Don't um, don't dim your your light at all. Um, so, tuning in to that to that frequency is is very important. But how you do that is 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 even more so. And that's where we come to listen. Listen is a card that is asking you to quieten down the mental chatter and. You know, there's this tendency to kind of push things in a direction of focus for you. And that can even happen in conversation, perhaps, you know, um, anticipating where things are going, steering, steering the conversation, maybe to make the other person feel better or maybe to get a desired outcome. You know, it's really sort of saying, you know, you're sort of really saying to yourself, go with the flow, let go, let go of the control of the control issues. This is really important stuff because... What you're wanting to do is to tune into the right person for the right reasons. And a part of what that means is to, to stop and to listen and to hear them. And the way to hear them is to be present with the other person. So, you, you know, you're not only using your eyes and your ears and your physical body, you're using the intuitive self. You know, so you're bringing all of that into a whole and you're 
essentially fine tuning your process. You're using all of the tools that are hidden away there that really are underneath this, this really strong desire to kind of push things in a direction that actually give you certain outcomes. You're gonna let all of that stuff go because that's not gonna get you to where you wanna be. It's certainly not gonna get, gonna get the, you that relationship that you really want in terms of love. But having said that, I feel once you've tuned into this, this intuitive self, okay, you know, because it's a crucial part of also understanding the other person, letting down all of your defenses and all the con compensatory measures and actually just being the real you and listening to that other person is a big part of the process of actually coming onto the same page so that you can actually begin to initiate this idea of a relationship. And I feel that this is close by, okay? I feel that within the next three months that there is somebody definitely around you. And if you haven't already met this person, then they are coming to you very, very soon. And I feel that within three months, love and the idea of it has become mobilized. So, you know, you're striking that into action. It's really starting to steer in a direction where you feel, um, ready for it and the other person is seeing you but just most importantly coming back to all of those fine-tuned skills that require you to tune into that person that is where that's where it all is okay um so there's a lot there in some ways but i feel that you're already on that path i don't feel that this is going to be an overly complicated process Perhaps you're even aware of your own control issues, but now is the time to do something about it. And there is definitely somebody there around you who is coming into your orbit very, very quickly. Um, and so, you know, there is a, a slight, I guess, um, not pressure, but importance to getting on top of this now so that you find what it is that you really want. I hope this reading has made some sense, and if it has, please leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. It'd be great to get me out there, and if you would also like to subscribe, do so, and you can hit the bell icon while you're down there. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. If you're interested in any of the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to my website. There's plenty of information there on who it is that I am and what it is that I do. It's www.tonyfoxtarot.com. Thanks very much, guys. Take care. Hi guys, this is card number three. So if you chose the purple dice, this is your reading and let's get the cards out on the table to see what we've got to work with. We have the Magician, Five of Swords, the Emperor, let's let those cards straighten out there, Three of Cups, the Devil, Five of Pentacles, The Tower, Two of Swords, Protection, Shine, Calling in your soulmate. I'm drawn over here to the Magician and the Five of Swords. And I feel that you're moving on from a really difficult period. I mean, my sense is that this has been a relationship. And I think this has been quite a toxic relationship where you've really been on the difficult end of receiving quite a lot of um, torment, really. It could be psychological abuse, could even be physical abuse. Um, I feel that this has been driven very hard and gone very deep and caused an enormous amount of conflict within yourself. Um, now, before I sort of say more about that, I just wanted to have a more of a reflection on, on, on who you are as a person. I think that you're actually an enormously strong person, the magician, the emperor, really powerful cards. The magician is very forceful, ready to force things into action, ready to, 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 to take control and to move forwards in a way where they're empowered. The Emperor is a card of ambition, striving to take control, striving towards reaching goals that give them, um, 
I guess, uh, autonomy and the ability to unfold um, a, a structure in their life that really um, steps towards empowerment once again. So these, these are very empowering cards, very strong cards. I think at core and fundamental to your nature, this is very much part of who it is that you are. And I feel that the magician coupled with the five of swords indicates just how motivated you are to move on from what it is that's happened to you in the past. And I kind of sense my sense, my sense is here with the Emperor and the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups is about celebration. It's a time after harvest where, you know, you relax, you're with friends and, you know, it's good times. You know, it often often is indicated with, with marriage and birth and um, celebrations amongst family and friends. It's, it's really a, a, a feel good factor. And that's coupled with the emperor. And I think central to your world at this point in time is really striving towards something that actually gives you um, celebration, happiness, good times. Um, and it's really, that's really sort of very much on an emotional level too, is just wanting to kind of not to have to worry about things so much, you know, because you've been under an enormous amount of stress. You know, the impact that that's had on your life has been really quite detrimental in many ways. And... If I come down here to the Tower and the Two of Swords, I um I feel that this is, once again, this is a reflection on what's happened in the past. The Swords are all about our past. Um, once again, they're about conflict. Um, I think what's happened in the past for you is that this situation with f falling out with this person and maybe also the disruption, um, the... I guess the disintegration um, of of the relationship it's 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 been enormously unnerving and it has really shaken up your world at a very sort of very I keep on this, this core fundamental level keeps on coming up for me in this reading and I think that it's shaken you so 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 hard and and to to so so deeply that it's been very hard to get your head around what it really means and why it perhaps even really happened. Um, you know, the fact that people can be so um nasty really, um and 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 pointed and motivated to, to make other people, you know, uh, you know, for you to make make you feel so um bad about yourself, really. Um and I, and I think that that's that's very difficult to so so therefore this this is 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 something that you're carrying with you you know it's a scar it's a really it's a really deep scar that you're carrying with you and it's very difficult to um release yourself from what it is that happened and and, and part of that is not being able to get your head around why it is that it's happened so the, a part of you is blocking it out the two the two of the two of swords is a card of of denial to some degree um but it's certainly about blocking, you know, instability. You know, the tower is instability. It's, it's you know, wanting not not wanting to have to face any more of that, not wanting to have to repeat what it is that's happened to you, but also not being able to look too deeply at what it is that happened and wanting to kind of block it out. Um, and, you know, definitely motivated to move on and, and, and to find happier times to take control of your life. But essentially, you know, the posture for you at this point in time is very motivated. The magician and the emperor are really, once again, core and fundamental to sort of moving forward, taking control and getting on top of things in a way where you feel empowered. So I'm coming over here to the devil and the five of pentacles. And this relationship is, is 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 sort of really showing itself here. This past relationship, you know, it's it's a relationship that's that's been very sort of conflict conflicted, and there's been a lot of I I, I feel control over you, um, and I think that this has really impacted on your sense of self worth. The Five of Pentacles is definitely a card of feeling down and out on your luck. Um, it's also a card of confidence and feeling that perhaps, you know, you don't have what it takes to, 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 to regain stability and security. Um, I think that this relationship has had an enormous impact on you and how you feel about yourself. And that's been very, very, very negative. Um, and I think that this is set up, um, 
a way of thinking about relationships. I'm going to come down here before I say too much more about that. Protection, call back your power, cut the cords, soul retrieval. Really important card here um, because it's about um, shutting down the cords that have been formed between pe people or places or even objects. But in your case, I feel people, it's about shutting down those cords, this connection to what it is, this, that, what it is that's happened to you through this person. It's about clearing the energy. So cutting the cord of, of, of that particular person. Because I feel that there's still a lot of power that's been taken away from you by them. You know, and, and so, you know, there's this, this connection to traumatic events and, 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 and relationships around that, um, that that are still seeping the energy away from you. And it's having a very strong influence on, on how you're sort of seeing your ability to, 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 to find love at this point in time. And I think it's very important to take the time just to shut down the energy to this person, um, to call back all of the trauma and, 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 and the events and the relationship that, that, that what it, whatever it was that happened, it's to call that back and to start healing yourself in a way where that person has no privy to what it is that's going on in your world anymore. You know, it's about eliminating them, casting them out in, 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 in a way that shuts down their influence, but also where, where it gives you the ability to begin to heal yourself from what it is that happened. It's about clearing the energy. Yeah, shutting down the connection with that person, clearing the energy. And then if I'd, I'd like to come here to shine, because this is a really important card. It, it, it symbolizes, you know, positive and powerful energy because it really is surrounding you at the moment. This is a very, really, a very, very good time for you. It's time to embrace the positive energy that draws in new relationships. And, and, and a part of what you can do here is, is, is empowering yourself, you know, coming back to the magician and the emperor. Shine is saying, you know, there is positive energy around you that you can begin to draw in to refocus yourself in a way that um, infuses new relationships with love and understanding and enthusiasm. Um, and a part of getting that is, is you know, getting that relation is, is, is visualizing the powerful energy and, and using this to, to, to magnetize and attract um, the people that you want in your life, really. So this is a good time for you to shine, and to, it, but it really requires you to believe in yourself, yeah, to use your, your, um, your, your talent to, to visualize what it is that you want in relationships, in positive and, and, and empowered directions, essentially. So really interesting stuff here because, you know, this is once again confirmed by calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help you help bring you together. It confirms everything I've just said. I, I feel that you've hit a low at some point, right? And you know, this person has had a traumatic effect on you that you're motivated to move on and to find true love. And that your self-confidence has really been knocked. But what you need to do is to look at what it is that has happened by facing the fact that you are still connected to this person in a way that you need to shut down and stop leaking energy to them in a negative way. Yeah, They no longer have control over you. You are empowered, but you need to cut the energetic ties. Okay. And you need to embrace the, 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 the positive energy that is really surrounding you right now, okay, to, 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 to suck all of that up, you know, on every level, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, yeah, to call that energy in and to use that in a way where you're not, you're not only protected, but you're healing. And then you are also using that energy to project out what it is that you want for the future in terms of a relationship. And my sense is that over the next five months, there is a really big shift for you in terms of where it's all heading in terms of a relationship and finding love. Within the next five months, I feel that you are standing on really solid ground, that you've worked through uh, the energetic ties and you are then positioned to find love 
in the truest sense. Within five months, I feel that you are set in a direction. And within the next year, my sense is, is that you will actually meet somebody and begin to forge a deeper relationship with, with them in a way that you have never done before. And this will actually be the path to love for you, okay? So there's a lot to, to, to work through on one level, but it's the only way forward. And you are the master of your destiny. And by creating a positive um, visualization of what it is that you want, you have the power to manifest love. And I feel that if you move towards that direction within five months you are on the path to finding love and within the next year there is definitely somebody coming into your life giving you what you really want and what you really deserve and i think that's the most important thing and that's where i'm going to leave it is that you deserve it okay and you have to believe that you deserve it i hope this reading has made some sense to you and if it has please leave some comments and feedback down below It'd be great to get that like and share this video where you can um subscribe down below and tap on the bell icon that'll give you notifications for any future readings that i post and if you're interested in my service as a psychic tarot reader you can go to my website www.tonyfoxtarot.com thanks guys take care Hi guys, this is card number four, and if you chose the green dice, then this is the reading for you. So let us get the cards out on the table and have a look and see what we've got to work with. We have Strength, Ten of Wands, The Devil, Three of Cups, The Emperor, Five of Cups, Temperance, Ace of Cups, The Ever Unfolding Rose, Love, Give Your, sorry, give your Relationship a Chance. And actually I'm drawn straight down here to The Ever Unfolding Rose. Cracked open, it's happening for you, not to you. Beautiful card. Of course, the rose is symbolic of passion. Um, and the other unfolding rose comes up at a time when you're going through a great deal of hurt and loss. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and really, it's an indication that you're going through challenges that really are about um, the heart constricting. Yeah. The, the challenge is to, to crack your heart open um, when you most want to really close it. And so I feel that this has been a very difficult time for you and, you know, things are really contracting at a heart level. Um, perhaps something has un had, had begun to unfold and there's a great deal of hurt there and that you're going through a difficult time. But essentially, you know, this, this is a card that says everything's going to be okay. Okay, and this, this card is going to make more sense as we unfold the reading. Um, so the idea of things going wrong is expanded on here with the Emperor and the Five of Cups. And I feel that there has been a difficult time and that you're still going through that. And there is a large amount of grief that you're carrying with you. I feel this is about a relationship, perhaps the loss of a relationship. Um about a number of things that have gone wrong in a relationship. And this has left you feeling very uh, deeply hurt. Something that you haven't gotten over, that you're carrying with you. The Five of Cups is a card of loss, it's a card of grief. Um, the Emperor is, is, is a, a very powerful card in, in that it's driven, determined, um, it's ambitious, it strives to reach the top, to take control. And I think that that is, is, is very much the nature of the feeling that you have. It's very deep, it's very strong, it's very passionate. And it's very difficult to get over when you have that rising up of so much emotional energy. And there is a lot of emotion in this reading. We have the cups here, the cups here, we have more cups down here. The passion of the rose unfolding. And then 
if I come over to here into the middle with the devil and the three of cups, I feel that this is more symbolic of the relationship that I'm talking about at hand. Now, of course, this question for this reading is when will I find love? So it's interesting that this relationship idea has arisen. And I will get more to when you'll find love after we've worked our way through this particular scenario. But I do feel that there has been a relationship that has been very dysfunctional, very difficult in terms of trying to find happiness within that relationship. And no matter how hard you've tried to, to, to reach that summit of, of things just being a little bit more easygoing, there is something that constantly pulls you back and gets in the way of things just unfolding in a very sort of a natural way where you feel like you have everything in hand to be able to just enjoy what's going on. But the passion is once again rising up through the devil. The devil is a very passionate card. It's a very sexual, strong sexual energy. It's a very, it's a very material energy as well. There's a strong physical attraction, um, a strong attachment to that person in as much as um, perhaps they have a hold over you. Perhaps you've had a hold over them. Perhaps the relationship, although it's dysfunctional, has actually also been very attractive. When things aren't always going right, when, not, when things aren't perfect, often they become um, something that we want even more. What you can't have is what you really want. Perhaps you haven't been able to, been, been able to have this person in the way that you've really wanted them. And if we come over here to strengths, and the Ten of Wands, the Wands, once again, indicate passion. It's, 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 it's spiritual energy rising up. There's a lot of energy that's rising up. Strength is about energy rising up. It's about feelings coming up to the surface, refining those feelings. And I think, that once again, they've been very powerful. It's a great surge of energy. So I feel that there has been a very passionate, very um, driven relationship that, is, that has had high degrees of dysfunctionality, and which has had a great hold on you. And it's been a very bumpy ride. And I think that, you know, you've begun to really open up your heart with this person and it just hasn't been clear sailing and it has really left you reeling in a way where you want to move on beyond it and find the idea of love, okay, that you haven't been experiencing. And if I come down to here, the temperance and the ace of cups, ace of cups is about new beginnings, yeah, creative new beginnings, but also emotional new beginnings. New beginnings where there's fulfillment on the emotional level. Ace of Cups could also be about children as well. Having children, it's a, it's a, it's a conception card. It's a very receptive card. Um, temperance, you know, again, there's, there, there are cups in temperance. Temperance is, 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 is another refining process. I, I think perhaps you're, 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 you're always also looking to for a new beginning where you have a, a, a much more refined emotional experience that really gives you a new life. You know, the Ace of Cups is about a new life. New life in terms of a whole new life, but also a new life with kids. Um, but the point is that you haven't necessarily gotten over what happened with this other person. So let's come down here to love. And love comes up, uh, it's, it's, it's very much about examining choices and... It's also, uh, it comes up when it's time to examine a relationship with others, but also with yourself. And it asks us to sort of really tap into this idea of, are we coming from a place of love for ourselves and also for the other person, the other person in this previous relationship, perhaps? But it's also asking for forgiveness, um, to embrace faults and uniqueness, both in yourself and in other people. And also it really does burrow down into this idea of examining choices that you're making um, in relation to matters of the heart. It also asks for you to raise your vibration to attract love to you. But there is an opportunity through this particular card to improve relationships that are existing with creativity. So romance, you know, weekend getaways, sharing your true feelings, opening up a dialogue with the other person in a way to let them know how it is that you actually really feel in all truth. Interesting stuff, because this all indicates that there is a relationship right under your nose. Perhaps it's a relationship from the past that you've moved on from, okay, and that you thought you've gotten over. 
but there's still this very strong attraction here and the rose has already started to unfold. The passion is there. The cups are flowing. The cups are flowing everywhere in this reading. And it has been a dysfunctional relationship, but it takes two to tango. I don't feel that things have been sufficiently resolved. Give yourself, give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. If this is a relationship from the past that you've moved on from, it's time to go back and communicate with this person at a heartfelt level, at a truth level, to let go of all of this idea about dysfunctionality and to really come from a place of truth, to communicate on a one-to-one -one level that really allows you to unfold what has already begun. I feel that there is love in this relationship. I feel like there is more to unfold. And I feel that this opportunity is actually going to happen. I feel that within the next three to six months, the, the two of you will rekindle what it is that you actually had in the past or, or previously, which is in the past, but maybe we're talking either longer distance past or more recent past. Okay. In, in any case, I feel that there is more for you both to unfold that you need to work through this dysfunctionality in a way where you are coming from a place of truth, okay? Uh, there are ways around that, as I was discussing with you before, which are about improving relationships with creativity, yeah? I don't feel that there's been a, a sufficient opportunity to really um, get to a point where the both of you really know what it is that you have until you've actually lost it. And that's going to take a little bit more time, perhaps, perhaps another three months or so. I think the two of you are really coming back onto the same page in terms of vibrational energy, really tuning into each other and realizing that there is a loss here, that there is grief, but there is also an opportunity to rekindle what it is that you actually had before in a different way, in a much more creative way. So love is right under your nose and it is actually going to, it, it, it is going to unfold. Give it some time. Okay. So, before I, before I close that up, there is one other thing I want to say. I think that you have an enormous, enormous amount of energy. You're an incredibly passionate person. I think that you have an enormous, enormous amount to give. And what is really important here is that you don't put too much pressure on yourself for it to be any particular way, nor should you put too much pressure on the other person to, for it to be any particular way. And I feel, I feel here with the, ten of, with the Ten of Wands that there is a tendency to take everything on, to bear it on your own shoulders, that somehow it's all supposed to be your responsibility. You can only do what you can do. Just be yourself, you know? And sometimes you just got to let go. Let it happen. Let it unfold. Okay? So I hope this reading has made some sense to you. And if it has, please leave some comments and suggestions down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Um... Like and share this video where you can and subscribe if you'd like to and hit the, the bell icon while you're down there. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. And if you are interested in my services as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to my website, www.tonyfoxtarot.com. Plenty of information there on what it is that I do, how it is that you can access my service and how you can get in touch with me. All right, guys, take care. Thank you.